You're live. Ah, here we are. Welcome. Good morning. Happy Friday again. Oh, my gosh. Again, we have another beautiful Friday where A we get to look outside this time. As if, if you've tuned in the last few weeks, we've usually been on the flip side of this room, but now we get to look outside, which is a Exciting. I like yeah, it. Exactly. And now you can really kind of see our training center, which is a super cool room in our factory location. And this is actually the room where we train all of our staff. I got uh, trained here. As well as wholesale clients. Mm -hmm. um, we also offer public classes that we teach in this room as well. Um, it's a pretty awesome yeah, room. Yeah, it's a very, very cool I mean, cool there's room. even two espresso bars. Two espresso bars. Garage Two grinders, doors. garage door, very, very industrial. Can't get much better than that. No. Um, so today we are going to do something I'm especially excited about because it's actually one of my personal favorite brew methods. Um, and not only is it one of my favorite brew methods, but it's also one that's incredibly versatile, even mm. with the brewers that are available. Um, and it's been around for a long time, you guys, almost a hundred years now. Sheesh. That's absolutely incredible. Wow. Um, so I'm going to give you a little bit of the history of the French press before we get into this. Sweet. So there was a man named Ugo in Italy in 1923. And Ugo Paolini actually formed a patent for a tomato juice strainer. While he formed this patent, he realized that the tomato juice strainer technology actually might apply to coffee brewing as wow. well. So he decided um, to sign that patent over to two gentlemen who are also Italians who signed a patent in the U.S. in 1929 for the first French press. So the first French press was actually patented in 1929. Then in 1958, another gentleman decided to kind of upgrade the design a little bit. Okay. So he okay. patented his own design, which came to be known as France, in France, as the Chambord. Woo. So if you've seen a Bodum French press before, you're definitely familiar with this particular design of the French press. Mm -hmm. However, it doesn't stop there. Later on, in the past 20 years, uh -oh. Espro actually created a new French press called the P6. The P6 okay. is my personal favorite French press because it filters the coffee through a two-stage system. But we'll talk a little bit more about this later on, but this is different than that original design. I almost feel like this is like the spaceship of all yes, the very coffee spaceship -y. Methods. It looks yep. really nice clean. and sleek, clean. Um, and we can talk about the extra features that this particular French press has, too, a little bit later on. Cool. Um, but then within the French presses themselves, even within just the Espro or just this Bodum sham board, there's multiple ways to brew it. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that I get really excited about. Yeah. Um, something else that's really exciting that we touched on in a previous episode is that you can also use it as a milk frother. Mm -hmm. You can't use the Espro one as a milk frother, but you can use the Bodum French press yep. as a milk frother. Mm -hmm. And that kind of versatility is something that really is unparalleled when you're using it yep. in your kitchen and don't have a lot of space. Yeah. So when people reach out to me and ask what French press they should get, um, if you want to buy something that's a little bit more affordable and is really versatile, then this is definitely the right option for you. However, um, if you want something that's a little bit more high end, looks incredibly sleek in your kitchen, and is also extremely durable, yeah. not really yeah. easy to break like no this, glass. can't tell you how many of these I've broken, yeah. um, then the Espro P6 is definitely going to be your choice. Yeah. And you'll see why in a little bit when we brew it. Um, so the, the first one that we're going to brew with you today is the classic French press. Yeah, let's do it. Um, so I'm going to use the recipe that we use at Stone Creek for this first recipe. Sweet. All right. I'm going to get some water while Drew yeah. is repositioning Sounds that good. camera. Sounds good. So for the water temperature for this particular brew, just like a lot of other ones, you're going to want 195 to 205. If you're using the glass French press, I'm going to highly recommend using 205 degree Fahrenheit water. And the reason for that is because you're brewing it in glass rather, rather than that brushed metal. Um, the brushed metal provides insulation that this glass simply doesn't. 
Um, so in order to protect your brew from the temperature, it's naturally going to lose over the time that we brew it. We are going to want to pre-wet this. Preheat. I also end up pre-wetting that other one just because it not only cleans it, but just kind of provides a fresh surface to brew on. Yeah. So now I have all of this. I'm gonna to wanna to make sure that I have enough water because we're gonna use quite a bit of water when we're brewing a French press. I'm gonna use 720 grams of water. Um, and I'm going to use 48 grams of coffee. Um, so I'll talk a little bit more about the coffee once we get this brewing. So I'm going to add all the coffee now. So there's 48 grams. And then after I add that coffee, I'll tear out the scale. And now I'm going to add half of my water. The cool thing, one of my favorite things about the French press, I know we've talked a little bit about what we like about it, but there's no waste. There's no paper filter. So the only exactly. thing that you're getting rid of is the coffee grounds, which you can compost, mm -hmm. anything like that. So it's very, very clean, good for the environment. Sorry, continue. Oh, no worries <laughs> at all. And that's one of the reasons why I personally love the French press. There's no filter involved, nothing to impart flavor on the mm -hmm. coffee, and it's very sustainable. All right, so now the exciting part. This recipe actually kind of blooms the coffee, kind of like our V60 recipe. Yep. So now I'm going to break that crust. And once I break that crust and stir it, I'm gonna fill it to 720 grams. Once I get to 720 grams, I'm going to cover it with the lid, but I'm not going to plunge down on it. Um, one thing, if you don't have a scale at home, water is a uh, gram to milliliter equal, if that kind of makes sense, not really. but. If you put 750 milliliters, it would equal out to 750 grams. So if you don't have a scale, go ahead and use like your kitchen um, cup. What are those called? Measuring cups, stuff like yep. that. That should be pretty easy. Yeah, and if you actually look at this, this particular recipe, if you can follow me a little bit down here, almost gets up to this metal line. Mm. So you can actually mm -hmm. kind of create and tailor these recipes so that you don't always need to have a scale on hand. Yeah. And that's especially easy to do in the Espro, which we'll get into next. So this is going to brew for three minutes total now. So we're just gonna hang out here. I have the timer on my scale right here so Sweet. that we can follow along. And now we can talk a little bit more about Tandem. Um, so not only are these bags super cute, this coffee is incredibly delicious. So it's a composition of coffee from Brazil that is medium roasted. Um, this coffee is brought to us from our partners at Carmo Coffees. This farm that the coffee is from is Alta Vista, which is Robson Vilela's farm in Minas Gerais. Oh. We've been purchasing coffee through Carmo for about five-ish years now, um, oh. and I really enjoy this partnership. Their coffees are incredibly sweet, clean, and juicy, um, which is something that we're always looking for. Uh, we medium roasted this particular coffee in the composition because it really ramps up the sweetness. But then we have a light roasted Colombian coffee in this composition to complement mm. that sweetness. Mm -hmm. That light roasted Colombian coffee is going to give you so much citric acidity that it helps balance out that sweetness on your palate and really provide a full mouthfeel experience. It's truly nuanced. And that's something that the French press is actually really great for bringing out. Yeah. Um, I know a lot of people in the coffee industry who sometimes say they never use a French press. Um, I'm not really sure why. I yeah. love using the French press the and oils. I think it's really versatile. Yeah. Exactly. So the really cool thing about the French press is that since it maintains a higher temperature, it actually extracts the essential oils inside of the coffee beans in a totally different way. Mm. Um, and you can actually see it on top of the cup sometimes yeah, when you're that. done brewing. Yep. The really cool thing about essential oils is that when they are warm, they're most perceptible. So you can really okay. enjoy the aromatics of the coffee in yeah. a way that's truly possibly unparalleled. Mm -hmm. yep. um, and it's really similar to the practice of cupping. Um, so if you're not familiar with it, cupping is actually how people like me that purchase green coffee decide whether or not they're going to buy the coffee. Um, it helps us analyze the quality, make sure that it tastes sweet, clean, and juicy, and it's free of defects. Um, cupping uses a method of brewing called decoction, which decoction. is exactly what That's the what French we're, press does. Yeah, what we're doing. So with decoction, what's actually happening is that you're simply 
putting water over the coffee grounds mm -hmm. and just letting it brew. Okay. You're not doing anything to disturb it. And for me, that's actually one of the reasons why French presses are so great. It really lets the coffee speak for itself. Um, you don't kind of taste how the brew method is able to alter it. Right. It's just the yeah. coffee expressing its inherent characteristics. Mm -hmm. So I think that is super cool. Yeah, and because of the lack of filter as well, that oil is gonna get through, there's not gonna be anything retaining that, like with some some other brew methods that have filters. And don't get me wrong, I love a V60, I love a Chemex, yep. but it's just something different when the oil can actually get through that mesh, the yeah, the metal mesh filter rather than getting stuck in the paper filter. Yep. Can you just tell the kind folks at home that I just had to change the camera battery. <laughs> hey, kind folks at home, Drew just had to throw a throw a battery pack in the camera. So if you were checking it out elsewhere other than Instagram Live, that's why there was an interruption. But we should be good to go here pretty yeah, soon. The audio shouldn't have going. Okay. Yeah. Sweet. All right. So as you might have just seen, or you didn't, I just plunged down the French press after three minutes and 30 seconds. So this is a four minute total brew time. So I do that 30 second bloom at the beginning and then afterwards I do a three minute, 30 second brew. Heck so yeah. four minutes total time. So what should we be uh, what should we be noticing in this cup of coffee over a V60 or a Chemex? Why? I feel like the French press increases the body of the coffee. Okay. And that is partially because of the essential oils that we were talking about. Right. Um, it simply doesn't filter out some of those fines that the paper filters would. Mm. Yeah, very bold. It's very. Mm -hmm. I don't know, you pick up that flavor right away. But it also that. tastes a lot cleaner than some people might expect from a French press. Mm. And that's why things like dialing in your grind size and using the appropriate coffee are really essential. Um, because solubility is actually something that impacts coffee brewing quite a bit. Mm -hmm. So if this coffee were potentially too light roasted, the solubility might not allow the coffee to brew in a way that we would enjoy. So that's why I especially chose this medium roasted composition because not only is the medium roast in this coffee well soluble for brewing, but the light roast actually is too. Um, so I think that that's something that's really important to consider when you're brewing is what kind of flavors you want to get out. Mm -hmm. I get a nice citric acidity with yep. this. I get some nice notes of tea, stone mm -hmm. fruit. It's just really pleasant. Yes, very good, very good. Um, Too hot for my palate right now. It is very, very good. hot. And that's something else to mention when we're talking about drinking the French press is that you might not want to drink it right away after you yeah. first brew it because you don't want to ruin your morning by burning your palate. Yep. Uh, especially if you have to taste more coffee in the day, like me, because then it ruins your palate for <laughs> yeah. the whole day. Then it's just or no week, taste. Like eating too hot of pizza. Yep. Yep. I've all been there. Yep. Um, but yeah, so talking about like letting the coffee cool and kind of wait a little bit. I kind of wanted to move into a little bit more of a, a technical brew for the French press that I actually learned from, um, I'm forgetting his name, James, uh, James, Hoffman. James Hoffman. Oh my gosh. I know it's only 914, but yikes, I have only had one sip of coffee. So there it is. But James Hoffman has a French press recipe that kind of takes a little bit longer to make. So I'm just going to get started on that and kind of show you what that's all about. Um, and then while we're waiting for that, we can kind of get into the S pro and the other products that we have here at Stone Creek. So we're gonna use the same French press that we just used for the, uh, the original recipe right there. But this time around, um, I don't know if we talked about grind size, but grind size for French press is gonna be pretty coarse on our, yep. our grinders here. It's as coarse as, as we coarse can go. As coarse as you can go. Um, but for this, for this recipe, we're gonna go a little bit closer to a Chemex or a V60, which is gonna be closer to like a, a drip grind that you would have for like a Mr. Coffee or something like that. So I've got a medium grind here, and what we're gonna do is just throw it in. Got about 50, 51 grams in there. And we're gonna fill it up with 800 grams of hot water. Ooh. And then we're just gonna let it sit for four minutes. That crust on the top is gonna be there. We want it to bloom. We want it to kind of sit in its own, its own juices, its own oils, all that good stuff. So we're just gonna let that get going, and then we're gonna let that sit for four minutes. And then we're going to kind of scrape off the top, get rid of some of the excess granules that are sitting on top. And the reason this brew recipe is different is because we're going to let it sit after we do all that for another six minutes to let all of those fines really get down to the bottom so that we're going to have a cleaner cup. One of the, one of the biggest 
complaints I've heard from a French press is that it can be a little gritty. There's some like yeah. soot at the bottom. If it you pour it all the be. way out, some of that soot's gonna be sitting there. And this recipe is to counteract that, to get that out of the picture, technically. Right. So now we're just gonna wait for four minutes and then we'll move on with this one. But while we're waiting, let's move into this S-Pro. What do we got? Yeah, and I'd also like to mention really oh. quick too that the cool thing about James Hoffman's recipe is that it actually kind of replicates the conditions that are present in cupping. Mm -hmm. um, so although the grind size is a little bit more coarse than what you would use for cupping, um, and this is obviously a much bigger vessel than a cupping bowl, we're going to break the crust on the top and actually scoop it off when we're done brewing it. Um, and that's exactly what you do with cupping. You allow the larger grinds to float to the top of the surface, take them away, and then let the smaller fines sink to the bottom. And then you simply put the spoon in to taste. Yep. Um, so this is actually a really cool brew method that I haven't tried brewing this recipe before, but I'm really excited from a cupping perspective to see how this might taste different than what I prepared. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that that's just really awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's very delicious. Um, my partner will only take this way. She won't, she won't have a regular French press. This is the one that she likes the most. So that's what we make at home. Yeah, and I, my husband and I also make French press at home. And as I mentioned in other episodes, my son loves to press down <laughs> on the French press. Um, and that's actually something that's really cool to note. The French press is a brew method that you can interact um, not only with your kids, but with other people in your home while you're brewing. There's almost something like romantic about it. Um, and it's just classy. Yeah. Um, so now we'll get into this particular French press. Um, and this French press, as I mentioned before, is made by Espro, and it features this double filter system. Um, so the cool thing about that is that the fines are going to be stopped from coming through these filters in a way that these filters really don't allow. Um, so these filters are much larger holes than the filter that you see on this. It's really hard to tell on the camera screen, but I promise you can see more light through here um, than the other one. So this is also a great time to stop and talk about the really Im big importance of cleaning your French press parts. As we were talking about, it's really cool that the French press is able to bring out all those essential oils. But the thing about fats and oils is that they also get left behind. It's kind of like if you put butter in a dish and then leave it, yep. that butter is gonna get stuck on the side of it, right? Mm -hmm. The oils are gonna get stuck on your filter and inside of your brew method as well. So you're gonna need to make sure that you thoroughly clean these um, to make sure that you don't impart old flavors. It's almost like rebrewing those old yeah. flavors into yep. your new coffee. Mm -hmm. And I can guarantee you that those essential oils won't taste good the second time around. So again, it's really important to take care of your brew methods and therefore yourself by making sure that you clean your brew methods. Yeah. Um, and one of the ways that you can do that is with Kefiza. I really can't tell you how much I love Kefiza. It has so uh, many purposes that go beyond cleaning coffee equipment that you should just buy it. Um, it's like having bartender's keeper or whatever it's called at Yeah, home. barkeeper's friend or yeah, something like that. Yeah, it's really so versatile great. cleaning. Um, and with this, all you need to do is put a tiny scoop inside of your French press, let it sit with warm water, and rinse it out thoroughly, and you're good to go. And then when we're cleaning these kind of filters, what we're going to want to do um, is use a brush if you're able to, even an old toothbrush, and just make sure that you get all of the little fines that get stuck particularly in the escrow around these plastic walls. All right. So I'm just finishing this up here. The four minutes hit and I got too excited, so I just went for it. Um, but we got all of that, the, the foam and some of the bigger bits off the top. And the idea now is to let all of the rest of the coffee that's in there slowly settle to the bottom. So. Right now, if you were to look inside it, you'd see all these little floaty bits and bobs kind of hanging out in there. And the idea of that six minute wait time is to just let it go all the way to the bottom. And then we gently pour it out and hopefully we're gonna result in a cleaner cup, less soot, stuff like that. So we're gonna sit that over to the side. Last week we were watching Nitro settle. This week we're watching French press settle. There we go. There settle. we go. Everything comes full circle. Well, I'm really excited to try this. Yes, so yes. So we did get a question I saw on Instagram when I filled up the water before, and someone was asking how they make their French press not bitter. Mmm, I 
think there's a lot of things that could go into that. Yeah, there are a lot of things. Um, and I, I don't want to be that that gal. Sure. But one of the ways <laughs> that you can fix that is by referencing some of our previous videos where we mm -hmm. talk about grind size, yep. but also water quality. If you're changing your grind size and your coffee still isn't tasting good, there's a very good chance that your water is affecting your brew. Um, so if you're finding that your coffee is still bitter or sour, um, which are two opposite ends of the mm -hmm. spectrum for mm -hmm. brewing, one represents over extraction, the other represents under extraction, not necessarily in that order, um, but you really need to make sure that you're preventing yourself from doing either of those yep. things. Um, yep. And improper water um, improperly extracts the coffee. Yep. So it's really essential yeah. that you have great quality water, not just great quality coffee like this standard yes, here. Yes, definitely. Always, if if your coffee is kind of not where you want it to be flavor town wise, definitely start messing with that grind. If, yep. and But don't go too far left, too far right, anything like that. You just kind of want to incrementally change it back and forth until you kind of get closer to what you're like, uh, what you do like, because what we like, what you like, what I like can be completely different from what you like. And that's kind of why we want to encourage that, like learning. OK, I know I like my French press a little bit finer because of this. So it's all it's all experience. It's all about what you like personally. Exactly. And I think it's also important to note, too, is that within that personal experience, the personal experience of bitterness versus sourness mm -hmm. can actually range very broadly. Um, so what I experience as being bitter based on what I eat every day, how many taste buds I have, yep. how well trained my palate is, might actually differ from how Joshua here experiences bitterness. And he might mistake or I might mistake sourness for bitterness sometimes. Yes. So that's why it's actually important to just try different things. Um, and why I won't say going one direction or the other is going to be right for what problems you're having. Um, just because we're all different and that's yeah. something to celebrate. So we can kind of celebrate those differences through different brew recipes. Yeah. And seriously, who would have thought? Right, yeah, absolutely. It's crazy. So and we aren't the experts that no. are here to tell you that you have to brew things a certain way. We're just here to guide you in yeah. your journey to finding coffee that tastes absolutely divine. Yeah, we know we know what we like at this point, but it's just a jumping off point for you. Figure out what it is that you like the most. Yep. All right, so we're still still waiting on this a little bit. Um, did we get any other questions? I just wanted to check. Was there anything else? Cool. Awesome. All right. Well, I am going to this this water is still fresh. So what I'm going to do is just give it a little rinsey rinse. Oh, yep. sure. And then the awesome thing about this is that it's double walled, so it actually insulates the coffee. Keeps it hot. There's also a fill line inside of this for max fill. Really important to not go over it because when you place this plunger inside, it's going to go all over the place. So seriously, do not overfill this French press. You will regret it do and not. waste coffee. Nope, not a good plan. This French press is going to get 70 grams Whoa. of coffee. Why? Because it's way bigger. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons why I brew this one at home. Get more out of it. So exactly. 70 grams compared to what we had in the original 48. one was 48. And then mine was 50. So it does take some more coffee as well. And now I'm going to need a heck of a lot more water too. So I'm going to use 10, 50 grams of water oh total. Oh my God. For my recipe for the Espro P6, I do not um, do the same kind of bloom that we do. I actually do a full weight water weight bloom. Got it. Um, which might be a little bit different than any other recipe I've seen. Yeah. But mm -hmm. it's what I personally like. So I'm just going to go ahead. Woo, water going everywhere. The reason why I'm being fast about this is because we want to get all the water in as quickly as possible. Uh. And there we go. That's a good reason to. Now, since I ran out of water, I'm actually going to change my game plan for how I'm going to brew this recipe. It's really good to just be able to riff and be in the moment. Yep. And I know that by adding the bloom in the middle instead of waiting, I'm going to produce a cleaner cup. Mm -hmm. The reason why I wouldn't want to just add this water on top right now um, instead of stirring is that it kind of would be blooming it in and of itself. Twice, so yeah. I'd rather mm -hmm. do the full thing. So it's been about 30 seconds since mm -hmm. I got that water. Yep. I stirred it up. And now you're not going to be able to see it, but I can. I created this recipe so that it would go to the fill line. Perfect. Easy. And that's so this super simple. 
is super simple. I don't need to use a scale for it anymore except to weigh out my coffee. Mm -hmm. The reason why you still might want to weigh out your water is because whichever coffee you're using might actually influence the amount of gas that is at the top. So there's kind of like this layer of foam and bubbles right now that's at the top. And, oops, I can't get my timer on. Uh -oh. That's the other one, right? Yeah. So um, being able to weigh it makes sure that it's a precise amount of water. And that also allows you to replicate it. You don't want to put this French press filter in like I was about to because <laughs> it doesn't belong. I'll use it though over here. So now I'm just going to place this on top so that it's sealed. But again, I'm not going to plunge down because when I plunge down on this French press all the way, it's going to lock the grounds at the bottom of the brewer so mm. that they mm -hmm. don't move anymore. All right, so now we're waiting on that guy. And then this little fella is all ready to go. So we've got our plunger on top and we just want to set it just below the level of the water. Not, no more, no less. That way we can kind of just strain it out as we're pouring. So the, the essential thing about this brew method is right now you can kind of see, if you were me, you could see how clean and not very particulate matter heavy this is. So we're gonna slowly pour it out. And hopefully we should get a little bit of a cleaner cup. I'll get Drew some of this stuff here in a second. It even looks a little you. bit lighter in color ever so slightly. And I can see that there are less fines in this just by looking at it. Um, this one on the left also has way more oil on the top of it. And that's something else that's important to note because like we mentioned before, the essential oils that are present in the French press are one of the things that makes it so cool. Yep, yep. But I simply don't see those oils present on yeah. the James Hoffman recipe. Yeah, almost I like you scoop them, them off with yeah. the, that cupping recipe. So trying this guy out. I'm gonna taste the other one first. I think even the presence of the oils kind of has a different effect on the aroma as well. So when you smell this James, Hoff James Hoffman recipe, it has a little bit cleaner, a little bit more crisp. Yeah, crisp. I think that's a great, great descriptor. It's interesting because even though it's cleaner and crisper, I this wouldn't be my preference. Sure. Uh, and that is very interesting since I'm a green buyer. Yeah. Um, the reason why I really like the French press that we first brewed is because I really like the mouthfeel that I'm provided yeah. by that essential oil. Mm -hmm. It provides this creaminess that I don't quite get with this recipe. Right, yeah, this is gonna be a lot more and, straightforward, kind of stripped. Yep. Yeah, um, so really depending on what kind of mood I'm in, I guess I might brew this recipe if I want something that tastes more clean yeah. and bright. Mm -hmm. um, but if I want something to be more chocolatey, more caramely, more fruity, it might be better to actually use the first recipe. Yeah, definitely. But I really like this one too. It's actually really interesting how drastically different. Yeah, taste. how it's same coffee, it's almost the same amount. This one is almost more like green tea like. Yep. And this one has more nuttiness from that Brazilian coffee yep. in it. Um, Absolutely. And that, that's nice. Um, this is a really nice option if you like cream in your coffee, that first French mm -hmm. press, but don't mm -hmm. want to add any cream because it provides that creaminess without any additions. Right. Um, now it's going to be time for us to press this press. French press. My son's favorite part. Boom, 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 boom. Round of applause. That's what I tell him at least. <laughs> we did it. All right. Nice. Woo. And so do I have to worry about over extraction with this if I'm leaving the coffee in the bottom? That's a really good question. Um, so Espro says that you can leave it in there a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. um, so the idea of this insulated brew vessel is so that you can simply set it and forget it once it's all brewed. Nice. And you can enjoy it all morning. However, just like if you were to leave a coffee in a tumbler, um, it does start to taste different over time. Yep. So even if it yep. keeps it warm, it might not taste quite as clean if you wait to drink it. Mm -hmm. So if you want the cleanest beverage possible, I would recommend drinking it right away or decanting it into a glass or ceramic um, cool vessel. Yep. However, once you put it in that glass or ceramic vessel, it's not going to insulate it anymore. Nope. Um, so you're gonna lose some heat. Mm -hmm. So if you wanna maintain heat, if you know that you're not gonna drink it right away, you can either leave it in here or put it inside of a tumbler. I find that this is actually 
pretty similar leaving it in a tumbler. It doesn't okay. seem to extract more than leaving it in a tumbler. Nice. But those solids are still further dissolving if they're maintaining that high temperature. Sure. Now. Now the taste test. Yep. Where's your cup? Oh. I just have one. We'll get an extra Here. cup. Here's one. Got one for Drew. So this is this is now my tasting all three of these together, and I'm obviously probably biased, but this third <laughs> one is my favorite. Mm, it is it is very good. I really like it. Um, it's kind of in between those other two recipes, which is really interesting and kind of yeah, goes to show kinda. just how cool the double filter system is Ooh. in the Espro. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of juicy. a lot of acidity in this one. So this is for sure my favorite. Um, but all of them are good, and that's yeah. something important to note. And even if I didn't think one of them was good, you can still think one of them is good. And you. Um, so don't let our preferences kind of overwhelm yours. Feel free to explore what you enjoy drinking. We offer a broad range on our lines so that everyone can find something that they love. Mm -hmm. You can, of course, brew your decaffeinated coffee in here, too. Make a half and half, oh, yeah. half decaf, oh, yeah. half calf. Two thirds calf, one third decaf. Whatever you're digging, you can brew it in here. Yep. You can also use French presses to brew cold brew if you want. Um, or tea. Exactly. So again, the French press is just so versatile, and you can use it as a tomato juice strainer. Hey, so, I know what I'm doing tonight. You know, I'm gonna this summer when you have all those tomatoes in your yard and you have no idea what to do with them, make some tomato juice in your French press. There you go. There you go. Make some bloody is perfect for the weekend. Love it. Um, one more note before we go is about this other Espro offering, which is really cool. So this is the P0. So this is the ultra light press that Espro offers, and it's a travel press. You can take this bad boy to go anywhere you want to go, and it has the same double filter system as this. That's so cool. But it's in a tumbler. Love it. It's really cool too because you don't take out that filter just like this yep. because it it stops brewing just once you plunge it down all the way. Mm -hmm. um, so you can find all of these products actually that we've used today on our website, stonecreekcoffee.com. And as always, you can reach out to customers at stonecreekcoffee.com with any questions that you have. Also drop some comments in yeah. the video. Let us mm -hmm. know what you thought. Let us know what you have questions about. Let us know what you want future episodes about. Yes. We want to have fun with you. We want to geek out with you. We want to have a great time with coffee. Um, and that's really what coffee is about. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. enjoying, enjoying the beverage, enjoying each other, enjoying and also together. giving thanks to the people who grow it. Because without the mm. farmers, there would be no coffee. Yeah, absolutely. So well, thanks again for joining us this beautiful sunny Friday. We hope yes. that you have the opportunity to get outside this weekend um, and enjoy some delicious coffee. Try a new brew method. Oh, yeah. Happy weekend, y'all. Happy weekend. Bye-bye.